Math 2414, integration by parts, using reduction formulas. This will be the last video in this series, but I would be remiss if I didn't take the results from the previous example and actually show you how to put them into play. Um, and in fact, um, in most calculus books, including this one, at the end there is an appendix that has a list of integral formulas. And although we saw a list of integral formulas in the review for Calculus 1, that was just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, there are books of integral formulas that number in the hundreds, if not thousands. I believe in this book at the end, there's probably a couple of hundred integral formulas, uh, and this would be one of them. But I want to show you how to use a reduction formula. Uh, just a reminder, the reduction formula that we created in the previous video was the integral of sine to the nth power of x dx equals negative 1 over n times sine to the n minus 1 power of x times cosine of x plus n minus 1 over n times the integral of sine to the n minus 2 power of x dx. And everywhere there's an n, that was just the original power of sine in the original integrand. And we're going to use this to evaluate the integral of sine to the fifth. Now, how do we do this? It's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is figure out what the n equals and stick it in everywhere. Well, since we're evaluating sine, of, uh, sine to the fifth power of x, and n is the power of sine, we have n equals 5. So we're going to let n equal 5 and see what happens. The integral of sine to the fifth x dx is equal to, and again, everywhere there's an n, I'm going to pretend it's a 5. Negative 1 over 5 sine to the n minus 1 power, but n is 5, so 5 minus 1 is 4, sine to the 4th power of x, cosine of x, plus, remember n is 5, so n minus 1 over n is 4 over 5, plus 4 fifths integral of sine to the n minus 2 power, n was 5, so n minus 2 is 3. And we have that the integral of sine to the fifth power of x dx equals negative one fifth sine to the fourth power of x cosine of x plus four fifths integral of sine to the third power of x dx. We've successfully used the reduction formula. But what we haven't successfully done is evaluated this integral. All we've done is turned it into a smaller integral. We've reduced the power because it's a reduction formula. So how do we finish it? Well, this is the integral of the power of sine. This reduction formula tells us how to reduce it. When you use a reduction formula, it is not uncommon to use it more than one time until you reduce it to a point where you don't need the reduction formula anymore. So this time, uh, now, let n equal 3 for the new integral. But here's where you have to be careful. We have one of two options. Do the new integral in the midst of this answer, or do this new integral separately, and then import the results into the original answer. Previously, when we did integration by parts, parts multiple times, we did the second one separately and then imported it into the current results. But this time, I want to see if we can actually do this problem while it's buried inside of this answer. So let's see what happens. Let's write down everything besides the integral. Negative 1 fifth sine to the fourth power of x cosine of x plus 4 fifths. And now let's open up a tall set of parentheses and apply the reduction formula to sine to the third. Again, we're using this formula, but this time n is equal to 3. So putting n equal to 3 into the reduction formula, we get negative 1 third sine to the 3 minus 1 power, so sine squared of x, cosine of x, plus, again, in this one, n equals 3, so n minus 1 over n is 2 over 3, so plus 2 thirds. Integral, n is equal to 3, so 3 minus 2 is 1. This is sine to the first power of x, or just sine of x, and then close off the tall parentheses. Now, are we done? No, but we're a lot closer to being done. 
We've successfully reduced the power again by two, and now we're down to an integral that we can just evaluate. I think we can finish this in one move. Yes, we can. Let's think about what remains to be done. This needs to get integrated. That's easy. The integral of sine is negative cosine, so this will become negative. We need to distribute the four-fifths because the giant parentheses aren't really necessary. And of course, don't forget the plus c. All right, so this first part is done. Negative one-fifth sine to the fourth power of x cosine of x plus, all right, let's go to town. Actually, the first part of the distribution will be negative because if you look at both halves of this addition problem, and this four-fifths is going to get distributed to both halves of the addition problem. The first half of the addition problem is already negative, so actually the next term will be negative. Four-fifths times negative one-third is negative four-fifteenths. Uh, the trig functions are changing. We have sine squared of x, cosine of x, and here's where maybe actually integrating this first is going to be beneficial. Uh, this will give us integral of sine as negative cosine, so we get negative two-thirds cosine of x upon doing this integration. And so when we distribute the positive four-fifths to that, we'll get negative four-fifths times two-thirds is eight-fifteenths. Uh, we integrated that to get cosine, and of course, plus c. So that's how you use a power, uh, excuse me, how you use a reduction formula when it comes to integrating. Whether or not you create the reduction formula is one thing, or whether or not you can create it is one thing, but implementing it is another thing. So to just review, by using the reduction formula, we took an integral of the fifth power of sine and rewrote it as an integral of the third power of sine, but by using the reduction formula again, we wrote that as an integral of the first power of sine, which we could complete manually and then distribute and watch your signs and clean it up. The integral of sine to the fifth x dx is negative one-fifth sine to the fourth x cosine x minus four-fifteenths sine squared x cosine x minus eight-fifteenths cosine x plus c. I guess we could get cute and maybe factor out a negative cosine, cosine because they all got one, negative because they all got one. And we could even get cute and factor out a fraction, but I think this is just as good an answer as any. I challenge you to take the derivative and wind up here. Assuming everything went correctly and I don't see any mistakes, but that doesn't mean there aren't any. By the way, if you ever catch a mistake in a video, post a comment, then I'll go in and make an adjustment uh, in the description of the video. But I challenge you to take the derivative of this. It's not nearly as hard as it seems. Just some product rules here. Watch out for your chain rules on your powers of your trig functions. And then despite all the fractions, when it all washes out, everything should cancel. And the sine to the fifth, and it's kind of easy to see where the sine to the fifth will come from. Wait a second, or is it? It's not easy to see where the sine to the fifth power will come from but uh, you'll have, probably have to use some trig identities to get rid of some cosine squareds. Uh, but I don't see any of those either. I, I promise you, if it's the correct answer, and I'm assuming it's the correct answer, you should be able to take the derivative and uh, eventually can clean it up to here. I'm about to end the video. I may record one more video just checking the answer and then debate whether or not to, to put it up there for you to watch, but I just want to convince you that A, it's the correct answer, and B, it doesn't involve anything that you don't technically have to do. Taking the derivative of that answer is, it's, it's a little drawn out, but it's not anything that you shouldn't be able to handle.